Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. The FCI's breed standard for the Rottweiler reads as follows. A brief historical summary. The Rottweiler is considered to be one of the oldest dog breeds. Its origin goes back to Roman times. These dogs were kept as herder, or driving dogs. They marched over the Alps with the Roman legions, protecting the humans and driving their cattle. In the region of Rottweil, these dogs met and mixed with the native dogs in a natural crossing. The main task of the Rottweiler now became the driving and guarding of the herds of cattle, and the defense of their masters and their property. This breed acquired its name from the old free city of Rottweil, and was known as the Rottweil Butcher's Dog. The butchers bred this type of dog purely for performance and usefulness. In due course, a first-rate watch and driving dog evolved, which could also be used as a draught dog. When, at the beginning of the 20th century, various breeds were needed for police service, the Rottweiler was amongst those tested. It soon became evident that the breed was highly suitable for the task set by police service, and therefore, they were officially recognized as police dogs in 1910. Rottweiler breeders aim at a dog of abundant strength, black-coated with clearly defined rich tan markings, whose powerful appearance does not lack nobility, and which is exceptionally well-suited to being a companion, service, and working dog. General Appearance The Rottweiler is a medium-to-large-sized stalwart dog, neither heavy nor light, and neither leggy nor weedy. His correctly proportioned, compact, and powerful build leads to the conclusion of great strength, agility, and endurance. Important Proportions The length of the body, measured from the point of the sternum, the breastbone, to the Asiatic tuberosity, should not exceed the height of the withers by, at most, 15%. Behavior Temperament Good-natured, placid and basic disposition and fond of children, very devoted, obedient, biddable, and eager to work. His appearance is natural and rustic. His behavior self-assured, steady, and fearless. He reacts to his surroundings with great alertness. Head cranial region. Skull. Of medium length. Broad between the ears. Forehead line moderately arched as seen from the side. Occipital bone well developed without being conspicuous. Stop. Well defined. Facial region. Nose. Well developed. More broad than round with relatively large nostrils. Always black. Muzzle. The foreface should appear neither elongated nor shortened in relation to the cranial region. Straight nasal bridge, broad at base, moderately tapered. Lips. Black, close-fitting. Corner of the mouth not visible. Gum as dark as possible. Jaws. Teeth. Upper and lower jaw strong and broad. Strong, complete dentition, 42 teeth, with scissor bite. The upper incisors closely overlapping the lower incisors. Cheeks, zygomatic arches pronounced. Eyes, of medium-sized, almond-shaped, dark brown in color. Eyelids, close-fitting. Ears, medium-sized, pendant, triangular, wide apart, set on high, with the ears laid forward close to the head. The skull appears to be broadened. Neck, strong, of fair length, well-muscled, slightly arched, clean. Free from throatiness, without dewlap. Body. Back. Straight, strong, and firm. Loins. Short, strong, and deep. Croup. Broad, of medium length, slightly rounded, neither flat nor falling away. Chest. Roomy, broad, and deep, approximately 50% of the shoulder height, with well developed forechest and well-sprung ribs. Belly. Flanks not tucked up. Tail. In natural condition, level and extension of the upper line. At ease, may be hanging. Limbs. Forequarters. Seen from the front, the front legs are straight and not placed too closely to each other. The forearm, seen from the side, stands straight and vertical. The slope of the shoulder blade is about 45 degrees to the horizontal. Shoulders. Well laid back. Upper arm. Close fitting to the body. Forearm. Strongly developed and muscular. Pasterns. 
slightly springy, strong, not steep. Front feet, round, tight and well arched. Pads hard, nails short, black and strong. Hindquarters, seen from behind, legs straight and not too close together. When standing free, obtuse angles are formed between the dog's upper thigh and the hip bone, the upper thigh and the lower thigh, the lower thigh and the metatarsal. Upper thigh, moderately long, broad, and strongly muscled. Lower thigh, long, strongly, and broadly muscled. Sinewy. Hawks. Sturdy, well-angulated hawks, not steep. Hind feet. Slightly longer than the front feet. Toes strong, arched, as tight as front feet. Gait. The Rottweiler is a trotting dog. In the movement, the back remains firm and relatively stable. Movement harmonious, steady, full of energy, and unrestricted, with good stride. Skin. Skin on the head. Overall tight-fitting. When the dog is alert, the forehead may be slightly wrinkled. Coat. Hair. The coat consists of a top coat and an undercoat. The top coat is of medium length, coarse, dense, and flat. The undercoat must not show through the top coat. The hair is a little longer on the hind legs. Color. Black with clearly defined markings of a rich tan on the cheeks, muzzle, throat, chest, and legs, as well as over both eyes and under the base of the tail. Size and height. Height at withers. For males is 61 to 62 centimeters is small. 65 to 66 centimeters is large. Correct height weight, 50 kilograms. 61 to 68 centimeters. 63 to 64 centimeters, medium height. 67 to 68 centimeters, very large. Height at withers. For bitches is 56 to 57 centimeters is small. 60 to 61 centimeters is large. Correct height weight, approximately 42 kilograms. 56 to 63 centimeters. 58 to 59 centimeters, medium height. 62 to 63 centimeters, very large. Faults. Any departure from the foregoing point should be considered a fault, and the seriousness with which the fault should be regarded should be an exact proportion to its degree, and its effect upon the health and welfare of the dog.